And I'm Nancy, and we are here talking to Gail Foreman, author Hi. of Where She Went, which is the awesome, awesome sequel to If I Stay. And if you haven't picked these up, please do because you'll need a box of tissue. And you'll love her like I do. And you'll, yes, you'll definitely give it a five stack. <laughs> Okay, so so where she, where she went is the sequel to If I Stay. And did you always know that you wanted to write a sequel, or was this going to be <laughs> no, ma'am? I mean, because you know the ending was just so I mean perfect. We can understand yeah. both ways, but we yeah. thought that was a standalone, and it, it was could have a been standalone. Um, it was a standalone book. I had no intention of writing a sequel. Like I, when I finished the book, I didn't even know if it was going to be a book. I didn't have a contract. It was just the book that it was. Um, and sort of then I finished it and I was revising it and I turned it in and then I had the idea for this other book that I was going to do and, and that was that. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about Adam and Mia. And even though, and there's a spoiler because we can't talk about where she went without spoiling If I Stay. Right. So if you haven't read If I Stay, go away. <laughs> um, read it and then come back. Right. <laughs> Just but, pause. Yeah, just no. pause. No. Yeah. <laughs> so I started um, thinking about, even though If I Stay ends on this sort of hopeful note, I knew that really I had left me and Adam in such a difficult place. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of hard years ahead of them. And as soon as I realized that and started thinking about that in a concrete way, I thought, well, what's going to happen to them? And then I started thinking about what's going to happen to them and how they were going to navigate those years. And, and managed to do more than just sort of muddle by. And as soon as that happened, I immediately realized how the story was going to go and what was going to happen. And immediately it became clear to me it, it would be Adam who was going to have the difficult journey. And that if there was going to be a story to be told, it would have to take place several years later and from Adam's point of view. I love his I still voice. did not think I was going to do a sequel. Um, I kind of, for my own relief, I just wrote a quick draft out, shoved it on my computer. I'm like, all right, that's there now. I feel better. I got back to this other book I was writing, wrote it, revised it, revised it, turned it in, and then pulled it. I'm just like, no, me and Adam would not shut up. They were just like, tell our story, tell our story, finish our story. And so um, that's why I wrote our story. Went. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> and was it hard like, to switch from Mia's point of view to Adam's? No. Strangely, I mean, this is the first book I've written from a guy's point of view. I already knew Adam so well from If I Stay that it was very natural to start writing from his point of view. It was hard to write from Adam's point of view because even though I don't think I'm giving too much away to say nobody dies in where she went, Adam's in a very, very dark place mm -hmm. for a good chunk of this book. And to be in that dark place was so much harder than to be in If I Stay where I kill off Mia's family. So Mia has all this grief and this huge decision to make, but the whole time you're rooting she, for her. You're rooting for her, and yes. she's surrounded by love. Mm -hmm. yes. She's in she's in she's in a headspace of love. Adam is not. He's confused oh, he's, and he's tormented. Sad. He's anguished. And I was there. And then the weirdest part was being Adam. I was angry at Mia, and that was just like the weirdest thing. I love Mia. She's my oh, girl. I am she's angry like, at Mia. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll get you'll get through it, you know. When you, when you get further along in the book, you know, I have a lot of readers who I've heard already saying, like, I was so mad at Mia, but then I understood why she left oh, Adam. Me. But I had that same experience. It was very weird for me as an author to be angry at the character I created oh. and love and feel for. Oh wow! Because mm. because yeah, the whole time I was reading If I Stay, I'm like, Mia, I love Mia, and I wanted Mia. Like you said, she's fierce and she's got a she's got a passion and she's got she's just you know silent and strong yeah just so strong such a strong character and and Adam's strong too but in this novel I've you know he's when you start kind of he's he's just really sad he's dark mm -hmm. you know he's a lot darker See, the real Adam is there it's underneath yes. and, and, well, it, and that's what makes this me book yeah the same really Adam it's the same person yes. though you no, guys, but as he you is. keep reading and the, the the sort of the layers come off. You see that Adam under well, there. That's why you feel just, so sad for him. Yeah. That's why, I'm, you know, I think maybe that might be why I cried on it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you cry at everything too. But I cried, and I'm not a crier. Yeah. And I cried. I cried at this book. Yeah. All right. So, I think it's my turn. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we know you're a huge fan of Jandy Nelson. Is that right? Yes, I am. Okay. And she's the author of The Sky is Everywhere. Um, with that Which said, you should all read. <laughs> with that said, do you read a lot of 
fellow YA author books? And I do. So what I do like, you recommend? I like to see what's out there. And so what do I recommend? Um, I've just read a whole slew of things that are kind of against type for me because I tend to read a lot of contemporary. But I've just read a lot of things that are more... Um, sort of fantasy, paranormal, and love them. I am late coming to the Holly Black game, but I oh, read, did you read, I read uh, White Cat, Cat, and I have Red Glove with me, and White Cat was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I was so into it. And I read a book called Chime by Franny Billingsley. I don't know that. Which just came out in March, and it's sort of historical fantasy, which is usually something that would make me go, ah, yuck. No. Um, but it's, it's just, the writing is absolutely the most inventive, incredible writing. The story, it takes place a hundred years ago, but it feels incredibly modern. Um, it, it was just, it was delectable. It, it was just fantastic. So I, that's what Stacey I Stacey and Nancy will run out and find Yeah, so those are two. We those will. Are, we're those we're are, fantasy those are, chicks that way. Like, yeah, so those are two that I, I really recommend. I'm a big fan of Stephanie Perkins. The French Kiss was one of my favorites. <gasps> yes, I just met her. And yeah. And she said she recognized me. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to reading Blake Nelson's Recovery Road. I okay. think that's on my must read list right now. So I'm going to pick up a bunch of books this, this week. Fine. Wow. And you know, these, these stories are so emotional, though, and they're very powerful. And did you have a hard time kind of separating yourself from the book? Like, like I'm, I'm, I assume you have kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you're like, terrible, terrible things happening, terrible things. Hi, honey, how was school? You know, I mean, is it hard? It's kind of weird because, like, on one hand, writing is such uh, escape from, mommy, wipe my butt, mommy, I need water, mommy, <laughs> okay, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's like, uh huh, uh huh. So, like, on one hand, it's like I get to then go into this world of Mia and Adam dealing with these complex emotions and love and hatred and what happened to our love. So, like, that part I love, but. When my sister read an early draft, or not an early draft, but a draft of where she went, her response to me was, I forgive you for being such a brat. Only she didn't use the word brat. Oh, oh well. She used a different word. She, she's like, you've been channeling Adam. And I think that that was probably true. Oh. You know, the, the, I was in sort of kind of a dark head space because I was in this character's head. Mm -hmm. And I do think that my, my, my kids, you know, they, they, they have the benefit of having me be like basically a stay-at-home mom. I mean, I mm -hmm. send them off to school. I'm there to get them from the school bus. Um, but sometimes mommy can be kind of preoccupied, and sometimes mommy can be channeling an angry 21-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, this doesn't drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are you currently working on? Is there any secret projects? There is a secret project, and it's only because like it, I haven't even shown it to my editor yet. Ooh, very um, secret. But I had to like write a whole book and a half to sort of get to this book, and it's something it's it's ambitious for me. It's, it's something new and, and difficult, and it feels sort of hard, but sort of juicy and gratifying in the way that where she went felt hard and juicy and gratifying. So that's a good sign. <coughs> There's not a guitar player or musician in sight. So is it still contemporary? Yeah, it's contemporary. I've decided. I mean, I've just learned that I'm more of a contemporary reader. Yeah, I thought I was more like. Paranormal. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's like you're not. I'll never Just say never, but I think this is, you know, what I do. I mean, some people classify if I stay as paranormal, so. Oh, really? Well, really? I've decided. That, I mean, she just said, no, you're really contemporary. I'm like, okay. Okay. That's what well, I'll start telling people. <laughs> so. All right, so now we're going to get to know some interesting author tidbits. Is this like a speed round? Yes. It is. Oh, very exciting. Yes. <laughs> And maybe, you know, we'll ask you a couple that we're, we're trying to add some new ones to okay. so we'll see. All right. Okay, salty or sweet? Oh, that's just my greatest dilemma. Both to combine. Doesn't French toast and hash browns. French toast and hash browns. Why don't they come together in one special? I don't want All the hearts. eggs. I want the hash browns. <laughs> Thank you. This is why I love her. All right. <laughs> Cook at home, take out, or dinner out? Cook at home. Ooh, I like you more because I like to eat at home. Do you say pop, soda, or Coke? Soda. Thesaurus or dictionary? Thesaurus. Country, hip hop, rock, or classical? Indie rock. Ooh. This is gonna really define you. Star Wars, Harry Potter, or Lord of the Rings? Star Wars, totally. Oh, 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 you're, <laughs> she's getting a double fist bump here. here. You can tell we have boys, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. fiction. Texting, emailing, or talking on the phone? Talking on the phone and emailing. I don't know, easy, but texting, I know. Oh. I, my, I can't work the thing. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to do these, but truth or dare? Truth. 
Werewolf or vampire? Vampire. All right. <laughs> Those are fun. Those are fun. Those are my favorite things. I just like it. Team like Edward, you, like clearly. So. Like you hear, you really find out a lot about another person by the things that they say about that. Well, thank you so much. Oh, it was thank so you, great Dale. to see you guys. Yes. You've been such big boosters, even before you read the book. Yeah. You crazy girl. <laughs> you just love her. Yeah. All right, with that, we will see you in the stacks. Bye. Bye. That was awesome.